My name is Steven Annie, and in this video, we'll be learning something new in Blender. In this video, we're going to learn how to model things in the edit mode. We'll first model a flat plate, then a bowl plate, and a water bottle. And then we're going to model other interesting things in this video. So first, remember that everything we have been working on is in the object mode. And we can now switch to the edit mode. Um, the shortcut to switch to this is a tab button on the keyboard. So you can press the tab and automatically it will go to the edit mode. If you press it again, it goes back to the object mode. So you can either do, use a tab or you click here and enter into edit mode. Now in the edit mode, there are three modes or selection modes that you will be in. We'll have the vertex selection mode. This vertex enables you to select just one point. So you can use this or uh, move to to move just that point. It enables us to be able to manipulate a specific point on a particular object. Then you also have the edge selection mode. The edge selection mode enables us to be able to model, to be able to edit. It enables us to be able to edit a particular part of the object that we are working on. While the face selection mode enables us to be able to select an entire face, and we can be able to change whatever it's there. Now, let's go on to change some few things here. So the first thing we want to model is a very simple plate. Now, I'm going to select this and press X and delete this. To be able to model a simple plate, I'm going to press Shift A and then go to Mesh and add a circle. Now, this circle will just give me a very simple circle. Now, immediately you add the circle, you can click here and you actually see this option that is here. And you can simply click here and you can turn on the end gun and it will cover the face. All right. So now when you do that, you can simply go into your edit mode and press tab to enter into the edit, into the edit mode. You enter into the edit mode and then select this. That's the move to. Now I'm going to extrude. The shortcut for extruded is E. You press E. When I press E, I move my mouse up. It will actually extrude up. If I move my mouse down, it will move downwards. Now mind you, if you look at there is a, a blue line that is showing now. Let me press Z again and you see that it's not locked on a particular axis. So I can move any axis I want. But if I want to lock it on the Z axis, I'll press Z. If I want it to be Y, I'll press Y. If I want it to be X, I'll press X. But I want it right now to be Z axis. So I'm just going to come up. And then I'll click to accept it. When I accept it, now if you look at the way it is now, it's not looking like a bow plate. So I will simply press S now to scale it out proportionally. So we'll have something like this. And I can be able to drag it down a bit like this. So right now, we're actually building a very simple flat plate. So I can be able to spread this more on this axis like this. So I can quickly extrude again E and then click to accept and then S to scale out. And I have a very simple flat plate here. So to turn into a flat plate, I will simply go and select my face selection mode. Select this face, press X. And I will delete the face. The X you are selecting, you, the X you are pressing is X, like like uh, uh, xylophone or that's X, not S, like save, but X. So when you delete it, you go into this place that's in the modifiers. Click there and add a solidify modifier. So the solidify modifier enables you to be able to make this to become a bit more solid. So that it's not going to be just completely flat like the, the way it was before. So we can just make it a bit solid. And then we can just go ahead to add a subdivision modifier on it to make it even smoother. So I can be able to add this here. If it's not working properly, you can click here and say move to the last. And you see how it makes it even smoother. So I can right click and smoothen my plates. Now, one more thing you should do whenever you have things like this. Remember, press Ctrl A and apply the skills. Apply the apply the skill. 
and then the last thing you should do is go back to edit mode and if you look at here there is something happening here the lines are not properly aligned so you have to put in another loop what we call the cuts now to put the loop cuts you're going to press ctrl r so if you press ctrl r it will actually put something like this if i bring my mouse over here to put the loop cut here if i bring it somewhere here to put the loop cut there so if i click and then it will enable me to be able to put a loop cut so I, you see the loop cut i can move it to different axis if i click again i will set the loop cut and then i will scale down to this point then i will also select this button here press extrude accept it and then scale it in like this Now, if you look at what is happening here this place is actually um we could actually use this this way because that's the way we want our flat plate to be but if you don't want that we can actually make it to be a bit uh, smoother and the way to do that is that you have to select this particular place let me go into the z mode so you actually see what's happening here so i've gone into the z mode if you select here and go to your selection mode and go to select and go to edge loop it will select all the things around it okay now let's go back here so you can simply scale out a bit like this and it will actually remove that curved that deep curve that you actually have and you have a simple flat plate and that is how you can be able to create a very simple flat plate so we're going to save this our work Let's call this edit. Now let's go and model a bow plate. Now we could actually use this one, but I want to start from the beginning again. So I'm going to move this out and I'll press shift A and then add a circle. Now, if you look at here now, there are times that you, when you're starting, you might have nothing. And once you click out this thing will not be able to you won't be able to put the end guns again so the other way of being able to when you have forgotten to put the end gun and then you don't have access to that pop-up that's by the left here what you will do is that when you enter into deep mode you go into your edge selection mode make sure you press a to select everything and you press f and it will put the face for that particular one now again we're going to extrude and click to accept it then scale out then e again to extrude accept and then scale out like that so we'll have a very simple bow plate here and i can be able to press x and click on delete the face so i have this bow plate here so we can just go ahead and put in our subdivision modifier and then make it to be two and then right click and smoothen it press ctrl a and apply the scale so remember we still have that thing here so we can just simply select the face here and extrude it and just scale it in like this i think that will even be faster for us than adding any other thing there so i'll just click here and add um, a solidify modifier once more and i'll go down here I like always taking it down to zero and then bringing it up little by little so depending on how thick we want our flat our bow plate to be so now we have a flat plate and a bow plate so i would like this one to be a bit so i can scale it down more like this so it will actually be like a real flat plate flat plate so i have this here the next thing i want to model is a water bottle now the water bottle i'm going to still shift a add a circle now when i add my circle i'll go into the edit mode again and then i'll press a while in the edit mode press f and i will press e and by default it will be locked so in case your one is not locked you press z immediately if it's not locked if it's moving like this press z to lock it so i want to have something like this and then e again it comes up and um 
I would like to let me go down a bit. I would like to make this one to come down here, then S to scale it out at the edges, E again for it to come up a bit, then E again. Now I don't have a reference, I'm just modeling this from uh, my imagination. I'll press S to scale it in, E again to go up, and then I'll press another E and move up and then scale out a bit. Then E again, and then E, and then I'll accept, click to accept, and then S to scale in. Now this is a very important part because we're going to do something a bit um, interesting here. So if I scale in, now I want to put up, I want to create the mouth of this particular water can. So I'm going to press E and come up. Now I want the edges here to be flat and come out here. So what I will do, I'll press E, I won't move it, I'll just click to accept. Now if you actually press G, you see that this thing has been extruded. Right click again to return it back to where it was. Now I'll press S to scale it out. And you see that it's actually on the same axis, on the same line. So we need that to be like that. Then we're going to press E again and then we'll have this part of it come up. And then we're going to press E again and click to accept it again. And then S to scale it in to that point. And then E to scale it and then we'll move our mouse downwards. So I would like to do that. So I'll press E again and scale in and then E and then I would like to go down to any point. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can simply just bring it down to this place. Okay, just somewhere here, just close to this point and you press X and delete the face and you actually have a very hollow thing and you wouldn't need to actually put solidify modify because this place is already making it look like it has a solidify modifier on it so i'll quickly come up here and add the first thing i'll add is a subdivision modifier now look at what it's going to do to this place so i'm going to have this and i'll increase this and right click and smoothen it now if you like it this way you can leave it if you don't you can actually put Control R. Remember when we talked about loop cuts? We're going to talk about loop cuts very well soon. So I'll press Control R. You can click and then you move it up to this point. If it's too smooth and you want to bring back the shape a bit, you click and bring another one. So you just put loop cuts to at the points where those lines are and it will bring back the shape once more. So I have this one. So look at the shapes. The shape is coming back again. So I'm going to have this one here, click and drag this to this point, Control R, drag this to this point, Control R to this point, Control R to this point, and then Control R to that point. And I'll also put it under Control R to this point. And then you can also use the face select, select this one, E. Once you just extrude and click to accept it, you can scale it in like this. Even if you like, you know, there are some cans that actually have some part of it, you know, that goes in. You can actually use that for this particular one here. So we have our can here. So now press Ctrl A and apply your scale. Please remember that. So uh, with this, we can be able to work with um, our water bottle. There are other things we can do, but we're going to leave it for now. We could actually put the cover, but we're going to leave the cover for now. So now, the next thing I want us to do is to build a very simple house. So we're going to learn how to be able to work with the loop cut in more details right now. So I'm going to shift that. I'll press shift A and bring in a cube. Now the cube enables me to model anything that has the, the rectangular shape. So I'm going to build a very simple house here. So I'll press S to scale it out a bit. Now press tab to enter into edit mode and use my face select to select the top of this building of this cube. Press E and click to accept it. Then S to scale it out like that. And then press E again and move it up. Then click to accept. 
then I'll press S and scale it in like this. Now that's a very simple house. So now we want to be able to put the doors and the, the windows for this simple house here. And this will enable you to be able to build very simple uh, things in the future. So we want our door to be here and our windows to be here and here. So to do that, I'm going to press tab and enter into edit mode and I'll add a loop cut. Now when you press Ctrl R and you bring your mouse over on this point, when you're going towards the, the, the vertical part of it, it will actually give you a vertical line. If you go towards this side, it will give you a horizontal line. Okay. So I'm going to go for the vertical line. So if you click now, it will only give you one loop cut. But if you want to have more than one loop cut, you move your, you scroll your middle mouse button, the scroll wheel forward. So the more you scroll it forward, it will be increasing the number. If you scroll it backwards, it will decrease the number to one. So I'm just going to scroll it and have it give me two. So I'm going to click. Now the, when you click the first time, it will enable you to be able to accept the number, how many you have. But then you see that they are not in, they are not in one place. They ca you can actually still move them. So, but when you click the second time, it will give the specific position to be in. So I can just drop it somewhere here. If you want them to be closer, once this is selected, both of them are selected. You click here, and then you select this, and sorry, drag it on the Z axis, and it will actually come a bit closer. So this is for the door. Then I'm going to put the other cutout for the upper part of the door. So we'll have a door. It would be this face. So you can click here and that will be the door. So to make this dot so that we can be able to open it and close it. Okay. I'm going to press P and click on separate by selection. Now see what's going to happen here. Once I click here now, I can be able to rotate, press R and Z. And let me just move out this this door. I'm gonna move it out like this. So you see the door is still there. So we we'll just hide it for the minute. Let's just press H to hide the door. So we have hidden the door right now. And that's H. So let's open the windows. So I'm going to go into edit mode again. Control R and put my two loop cuts. Click and click again to accept. I will bring it together a bit. Control R again and click and bring it up. Now, imagine if mistakenly you clicked out and you want to select, maybe you want to move all these lines up more. Like you want to take it to maybe somewhere here. All right. What you should do, select just one of the lines and then you go to select, go to select loops and then you click on edge loop. I need to select all of it. If you can also try out holding alt and clicking on one of them, it will also select. So, but sometimes there are some compatibility issues I've found in some versions of Blender in some laptops that when you hold alt and click, it will not select the entire loop. So you can always use this to be able to select the edge loop. So I can just drag it up or down however I want it. So now I'll use my face select and click on this face and click on that face and I'll press P again and separate by selection. So now it is now an object of its own. Go back to object mode, select it and press H and you have this open right now. So this is our very simple house and our um, plates that we actually have here. So the next thing I want to model is a spoon. So for us to model a spoon, you can just press shift A and then bring in a circle this time around too. And I'm going to enter into edit mode, use my edge selection mode, select everything and press F to face it. And I will use my scale to scale it this way. And then I'll press E and Let's shoot it up and scale it out like this. So I have something like this. So I would like to put Ctrl R, put a loop cut here and scale it out like that. Just something like this now. So 
I'll quickly go into this place and select the top and delete the face and that's how we're going to get the front part of the spoon now I can actually go ahead to select this part of the spoon so I'm going to select this part and this part and I'm going to extrude E and then lock it on the x-axis and extrude it this way now I don't want this to be thick if I want it to be thick I would have used here because I want to see how I'm going to use my solidify modifier on this part so I can just scale this out and when I'm over here I would like to press another E X so I've done this so that I can be able to scale use my scale and scale on this axis like this E again and accept it and drag it out so if you look at now this part is bigger so I can just come in here I want to make a very stylish spoon E again and push this out and have this one scale out a bit this way let's move back a bit okay I think this is um okay so if you want to select just this part you can click one of these parts and press L over it so it will select everything here so another way you can use to select it is you can just use your your this your selection here that's this box selection click and select everything here and then you can be able to scale it on this axis too if it's not the way you want it so we'll have something like this so I'll quickly come in here and I'll add a solidify modifier so the solidify let's see how thick it will make it I seen that okay so I think this should be fine for us but not too much and then let's try adding a subdivision modifier on it and um, make it to be up to two always control R um, right click and then smoothen it so we'll have a very simple spoon here that we can be able to use that might not be the best spoon but we can actually be able to work with this for the meantime so we can S to scale it down and then we'll have our spoon just somewhere here. Then we can also be able to model a fork. Then that's the last thing we're going to do now. So for us to do that, I'm going to bring in a plane. So now I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to scale this down here so I want to divide this because we're going to create our fork from here so press ctrl R and move this up so I want to have about uh, let's say this number of points I've, I have um, let's go for let's do that again one two three four five so we'll have five points so I can just come in here and um, I'm simply going to select this part I think I'm going to change some few things here let's go back a bit I'll first of all control R divide it into two so this is the, the other part of it and then come over here do that again one two three four five okay so we'll have this here so I'm going to delete all these ones yep so 3 3 here and then this one will be just part of the fork here so I will simply select this put another loop cut here and drop this one here select this this and that and delete this so now that is our fork and um, I will quickly get these things together and how to get them together I will use my selection here 
and I will drag this out. Make sure that this one is not selected. Let me unselect this one. And I will use the scale to scale them together this way. So there are other ways I can use to model this, but I think this will be the easiest way that actually makes sense to most of us. All right. So other things we can do to make just each of the point, each of the, 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 the mouths to be pointed, but we're not going to do that for this particular video here. So I'll just push this here and I would like to select these points here. These points with my vertex selection and scale them all together this way. So I have something like this. So I have something very close to this. All right, so let me also select here, 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 and here. And just scale it in a bit this way. Okay, so I think I have something very interesting here. Now, if you look at the, the points, the, the, the mouth of this foil is actually too long. So I'm going to select all of it. The points here, hold shift the edges and use this and drag it backwards this way. So let's go up a bit. Use our scale and scale it in too. So we'll have this one here, enter into edit mode, select the edge here, this edge, push it back a bit, and let's scale this down to this point. E again, accept it, click, and drag it out this way. So I think um, we can be able to work with this. If you want to be a bit um, curved, you can actually drag this up this way. Select this one, drag it up that way. So if you don't want it to be like straight. So after that, we can simply add our solidify modifier on this one too. And just increase it, not too much. And I would like to add the bevel on it. And that will be awesome. Press Ctrl A, apply that, right click, smoothen it. Okay, so I have something like this. Okay, so with that, that comes to the end of our edit modeling. So in the next video, we'll be doing something more interesting that will be texturing and adding some other very interesting things. So I will see you in the next video.